I want to welcome you to the online church where Jesus Christ is doing mighty things in the lives of people, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and everybody is somebody. Yes, you're a somebody at the online church. Praise God, everybody, somebody. Greetings, saints, greetings. My friends, we give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. You just heard that powerful song, There's Healing. There's healing. God specializes in healing. There's nothing that's too difficult for the Lord. Nothing, nothing too difficult for the Lord. He can do all things. He cannot fail. That's one thing he cannot do. He cannot fail. And so we welcome you to the online church. We are recording. Our recordings go all over the world. Praise God. You can find these recordings on Facebook. You can find them on YouTube and at our website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. That's www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. Hey, out there, aren't you glad you woke up this morning? Aren't you glad you're still in the land of the living? I'm glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad somebody said, what's so good about this morning? Hey, he woke me up this morning. He woke me up this morning. We want to give out a shout out to Dustina and her family. Give a shout out to Ryan Trogler and his family. We want to give a shout out to Jackie Fisher and her family. We want to get a, give a shout out to all of our friends all over the United States of America. We want to give a shout out to our friends in Africa, in Europe, in uh, North and South America. We praise God. We thank you. We thank God for those of you who cannot be online with us live, but worship uh, here with us by way of the recording. Thank God that we can record these ministries, and we bless God. We bless God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. We're going to uh, get ready for uh, some scripture and some word, but first of all, we want to... Uh, Ask Brother Ryan to come and lead us in prayer. That's our friend Ryan Trogler. Praise God. Uh, uh, we're going to ask Ryan to lead us in prayer. And then we're going to uh, hear two songs from our friend Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson in Spiritual High Ministries. Kevin Wilson, he's given us permission to play his songs. So we're going to ask Ryan, hey, Brother Ryan, can you lead us in prayer? Morning, Pastor. Morning, Church. Um, yes. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day today. We want to thank you for supplying all of our needs and meeting and exceeding them as well. Uh, we want to thank you for just dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sin <clears throat> and ascending up into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. Lord, we want to ask you to come down and Ask, you know, help Pastor Carter give us your word and give him the courage and the knowledge and the wisdom to give us your word again today. And Lord, we just want you to keep on giving us the miracles and showing, showing the non-believers that you are here and you are for real. Make them believe, Lord. Make them believe. And Lord, we just want to also sh uh, send out a prayer for all the people who were affected by the hurricane and just give them whatever they need, Lord, and just we just want to say we just thank you, we love you, honor you, praise you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ, bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Ryan. Praise God. Thank God for you. Thank God for your love for the Lord. We give a shout out to your precious wife, Tara, and your daughter, Jenna. And thank God for the mighty things he's doing in your family. And we praise God that God is healing uh, your brother, Ryan. Hey, how about giving us an update on how your brother's doing? Uh, sure. Uh, the last update that I got was uh, was just a young day there, and, and like yesterday I texted you about that. And uh, he's actually because he couldn't swallow his own food, so he is now swallowing his own food. He's walking uh, with a little bit of help, but he does have a walker. He, he is walking, which they said he could. It would kind of be almost impossible for him to do. Um, but he is going to the restroom himself, and he's he's. He, he, the Lord just performed a lot of miracles on him, <laughs> and uh, you know, 
I interceded for him that when we went to visit him, I said, you know, in the book of Jeremiah, there is a healing verses in there, and in the book of James, there's a healing verse in there. And also done the sinner's prayer over him and the Romans 10, 9 and 10, which is how to get saved. Um, I prayed those through him, and it felt like somebody set me on fire. And I, as I, hit him, I did hit my hand on his shoulder because I didn't want to touch his head. And it, I felt the surge of the power of the Lord going through my hand. And, and I said, man, I said, because my brother was in and out because he was medicated pretty heavy. I said, I don't know about you, dude. I said, but I felt something going through my hand. He goes, yeah, he goes, I felt it. Coming out, coming out of a dead sleep of being medicated. He goes, yeah, he goes, I felt that too. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but if you, if you don't believe in the Lord, you're going to because he he's going he's going to show you miracles. He's going to do things through you and for you, and it's just it, it, it's 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 un, there's no words to describe what the Lord can do. I mean, you, you you just almost have to experience it. You know, I mean, we we know the Lord can perform miracles and stuff. But like I said, when I when I prayed down prayers over him and had my hands on him, it, like I said, it just felt like somebody set me on fire. And he also come commented that you know he he felt something going through him. So praise God, praise God, man, that's awesome, that's awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan's brother had suffered a massive stroke, and and uh, uh, God sent Ryan to to minister to him. Hey, Ryan, was that your first assignment like this? Oh uh, yes, sir, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and it really and. I was I took my hand off my shoulder off his shoulder and I was still feeling hot and I heard this voice in my head, Hey, put your hand back up or I ain't done yet. <laughs> All, <laughs> right. My... All right. It's just obeying the Holy Spirit. He's the yep. one who does the work. He operates on our faith <laughs> and praise God. And 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 Ryan, you said you felt a surge go through you, huh? Yeah, it felt like a, a real strong electrical current. If anybody's ever felt an electrical current going through you by, I don't know, by, by even through the Lord or just by hitting a couple of electrical wires together by accident, but it's like a, it, it's like a real powerful electrical surge that came, I felt it going through my body and out of my hand and into my brother. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and did I hear you say, your brother said, wow, dude, I felt that too? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, was, he was heavily medicated when he said that to me. I mean, when, he, when, you're, heavy, when you're heavily medicated like that, because he was in and out of sleep, and he come out of that sleep or that little bit of a slumber, and he said, yeah, dude, he said, I felt that too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. It won't be long before he's up and about, and he's going to have a mighty testimony. Listen, and Ryan, you, you read to him Romans 10, 9, and 10. Uh, yes, uh, the, the how to get saved, praise God. Yep. Do you believe yep. he's going to get saved? Yes, because like I said, well, let me tell you a little bit about that too, because when I said the sinner's prayer and everything else over him, like I said, he was he was heavily medicated. He was in and out of slumber. And he actually, like, again, he was he came up, he looked me right in the face, and he goes, he goes amen. I said, dude, I ain't done yet. <laughs> say, oh, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Thanks, Ryan, for obeying the Lord. Thank you. And thank you, Lord, and and praise God. And, and we're going to see great results in this situation and in other situations. So you all continue to pray for Ryan, for his brother, for his family, <clears throat> and that Ryan continue to be faithful. And, Ryan, I want to thank God for you for being obedient to the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank you and Miss Jackie and everybody for their prayers, and please continue to pray for him because he is really improving. And... I uh, still, like I said, it's in the book of Jeremiah. It's it's uh, chapter 30, 17 and 18, and Jeremiah, I believe it's 17, 14, and 15, and then James 5, 14, and 15 as well. They are the healing verses, and that's what I prayed over him. Hallelujah. Praise God. You put the word in the atmosphere. You put the word in the atmosphere. And Ryan, you know, the, the word of God says God's word will not return unto him void or empty. When we put it out there, God will perform what he promised to do. Unless there's some doubt and unbelief, God is going to perform 
what he's promised to do. And the scripture even says he will hasten his word to perform it. So, Ryan, you did what God told you to do. And God even said, put your hand back up there. I'm not finished yet. Hallelujah. It pays to obey the Lord. <clears throat> it pays to obey the Lord. And Ryan is a witness. Praise God. We hear more from Ryan uh, in the upcoming weeks about this progress. And, and uh, we're looking forward to the day when Ryan's brother will come on and share his testimony. Amen. 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 Praise God. Give God. Give God all the praise. Praise God. Praise God. I like, I, ladies and gentlemen, I like that part where Ryan said, his brother said, his brother was heavily medicated. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he was heavily medicated. Dustina, he was heavily medicated. And the brother said, hey, dude, I felt fat too. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. You know, uh, I have a friend in Lancaster County, uh, Pastor Mark Moyer, and just down the road from you, Ryan, and he, uh, Pastor Mark Moyer says, we're just the pipe that God blows through. We're like the pipe when God blows his breath through us. He blows the power through us. We're the pipe. We lay our hands on people in the name of Jesus, but the power, the excellency is of God. Jeremiah said it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Ryan felt the fire. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing is real. It's real. When you obey God, God does real things. And when he speaks to us, when we obey, God does beautiful things. And so we praise God. Can't wait to hear <clears throat> the testimony coming from Ryan's brother. Praise God. We're like the wire. Ryan was the wire, the electrical wire. Uh, you can hook up wires, but some power has to surge through the wire. Ryan said, ladies and gentlemen, as he laid hands on his brother in the name of Jesus, Ryan said he felt the surge of power go through his hands. He was like on fire. He said it's the first time he's ever experienced that. Ladies and gentlemen, we can experience that in the name of Jesus. And if believers would just lay hold to the word of God and make ourselves available, we could empty the hospitals. Ryan, hey, Dustina, we could empty the hospitals. Uh, and we could empty the hospitals over there. You all in Kenya, you all in Uganda, you all in, in Brazil, you all in Germany, you all in Switzerland. We could empty the hospitals if we obey God. You see, God has the power. And the scripture says, for the eyes of the Lord, God's eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on them whose hearts are perfect towards him. He's just looking for somebody like Ryan, like Tara, like Jenna, like Dustina, like you. He's just looking for someone who's going to be obedient enough to lay hands on the sick or to read some scriptures to the sick and then just step back and watch what God will do. Well, praise God. Hey, let's bring our friend, uh, um, Kevin Wilson on. He's going to sing two songs, and then we're going to hear some words. This is Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. He's out of Kentucky, Spiritual High Ministries, and you can contact Kevin. You can go on his webpage, kevinswilsonband.webs.com. That's kevinswilsonband.webs.com. We're going to play two of his songs now, and one later. He's given us permission to play his songs and we're going to uh, play, first of all, Born Again, and then we're going to play Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and then we're going to hear the word, the word, uh, uh, we're going to ask Jackie Fisher to read the word for us from 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, and then we're going to hear a message entitled, um, Who Will Not? go into heaven who will not go into heaven let's get ready for Kevin Wilson he 
He's coming. I might have to reverse this again. Come on, Kevin Wilson. We're waiting on you. While Kevin's coming up, I don't want to waste a whole lot of time, but we're waiting for Kevin Wilson, and he's going to sing uh, two of his songs. One is Born Again, and the second is Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And I had played it earlier. The system is not acting right. But, Kevin, come on, Kevin. Don't leave us hanging, dude. Well, praise God. Praise God. It's my system. I apologize. I apologize. So let's go and let's have um, Jackie Fisher read us the scripture. Uh, would you do that for us, Jackie, please? And I will check out the system while she's reading the scripture. Yes, I will. Uh, <clears throat> six, nine through eleven. Remember not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's First Corinthians 6, 9-11. Okay, Jackie, would you go also and read verses 19 and 20? Yes. 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20. Thank you very much, Jackie. I appreciate you reading the scripture. We just love Jackie Fisher, and thank God uh, she reads the word with, with power, with um, conviction. Thank you very much, Jackie. Okay, I'm still trying one more time to bring up Kevin Wilson. Um, and we're not going to labor with this. Just have to get a new sound system. That's all. One that's dependable. Well, praise God. Okay. Um, we're limited in the songs that we play here in this ministry. You have to have people's um, approval. And um, we do have Kevin's approval. But some of the songs we play, we cannot record them. And so um, we don't play them during the regular service. Like the song you heard earlier today, we don't have permission to record that. We don't want to violate people's copyright. So um, we'll work something out. Eventually, um, there will be more songs available. We can incorporate more songs into the ministry. Well, bless God. Wasn't that a wonderful testimony from Ryan Chogler? Okay. And a great testimony. One of the songs we were going to play was Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And Ryan didn't sweat the small stuff. He saw his brother there suffering, recovering from a stroke, but Ryan did not suffer the small stuff. He didn't sweat it. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this Word of God today. And we praise God and, and, and bless God for what he's doing. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. 
And such were some of you. Or we could say, and such were some of us. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And then the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God gives us some great promises. Great promises. We are the temple of God. You say, well, where does God live? God lives in heaven, and he lives inside of every believer. That is why we have a responsibility to take care of our body, our mind, and and and. And be careful what you let touch your body or enter into your body. Or be careful what impacts your mind. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. If, if Christians can see their bodies as the temple of God, as the tabernacle of God, and to read uh, uh, in, in Exodus and Leviticus and, and, and the Old Testament, see and look at that tabernacle and then look at the temple, and, and, and equate that temple with our own bodies, we will discover that God lives in us. And, 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 and the holy place, the holy of holies, is in our hearts. Yes, there's one in heaven, and then there's a, 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 a type of the Holy Spirit, the holy of holies, inside our heart. Our heart is the throne room of God. Once we make this connection and realize that all this is possible because of the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection, and that God seeks to, to dwell in the hearts of mankind, then we can be the people of God, the church he wants us to be. People will see Christ in us. People will want to hear the word of God coming from us. People will want us to lay hands on them so they can be healed in the name of Jesus, and people will want God. Not us, but they will want God. Well, let's take a look at a list of ten kinds of people who will not go to heaven. Ten kinds of people who will not go to heaven. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go through this list. I didn't write this list. I didn't make it up. I didn't... Uh, uh, I'll manufacture this. This is written. This whole list is produced by God. And any contention you have, <clears throat> any argument you have, you take your arguments to God. God wrote the book. I'm just a preacher. I'm just a pipe that he blows through. I'm the wire. The, the power is going to surge through the wire. And look, as we go through this message today, and if you discover, hey, I'm on this, I'm on this list. If you find that uh, you're one of the people on this list, then you can get off the list by repenting and turning around. And, and uh, God gives people an opportunity. Once you hear the word of God and you believe it, and if you say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in this, I'm doing this, you can repent, ask God to forgive you of your sins, and turn from it, and turn from it. We're going to talk about this a little bit later on. I want to look at an extremely important passage, and that's 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Let me read it again. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And of such were some of you. The Bible reminds us we were like some of these. But ye are washed, ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our Lord. Uh, this list we're going to go through today. Many of us have done things that are on this list, but we do not continue to do these things. We've been washed 
in the blood of Jesus. We have repented. We've turned from these things. And that means that we are now justified. And listener, if you are involved in any of these, don't get angry with the preacher. Don't throw rocks at the postman. Uh, 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 just repent. If you find that you're on this and you know, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. Don't try to hide it from God. Repent. Tell God you're sorry and then ask God to deliver you from it. Get out of it. Get out of it. The Bible says there's no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. There are a lot of people there continuing in sin. and They're blaming God. Well, God, you made me this way. Uh, you made me uh, 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 to be effeminate. You made me to drink. You made me to, me to enjoy adultery. No, God did not make you that way. So we're going to look at this. Um, Paul gives us in this passage, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, he gives us in this passage a list of people who will not be included in heaven. They will be excluded from the kingdom of heaven. So you need to listen to this. You need to warn people. If you have people in your family or your circle of friends, warn them, warn them, warn them. Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, some of these people in this group are found on church membership rolls. Many are prominent people in churches. Ladies and gentlemen, many are pastors, co-pastors, church leaders. Many people on this list that we're going to go through today are members of churches. Many established churches. Many uh, have founded churches. Ladies and gentlemen, but the Bible says they're not going to go into heaven. No, I did not make this list. I did not write the scripture. God wrote it. So we need to pay heed to it. Uh, many are found on church membership rolls, but they will not be found in heaven's rolls. You know, one thing about being a preacher, Ryan, is the fact that when you preach the word of God, people accuse you. Well, you think you're better than everybody else. You know, they, they, people are afraid to attack God, Ryan, so they attack you. They attack you. Uh, they're afraid to attack God, Jackie Fisher, so they attack you. And then they want to lay the blame on you. They want to get you all upset. And then if they get you all upset, have you say something you wouldn't say, normally say, or do something you wouldn't normally say. They say, see, I told you he was a hypocrite. I told you she was a hypocrite. And then people justify themselves to keep on living the correct, corrupt lives that they're living. But ladies and gentlemen, no, no, no. When you're called by the Lord and God's got an anointing on your life and God says, preach this or teach this or do this, you do what God says to do and, and, and let the Holy Spirit do the work. Now, every one of us who are called Christians, who are called by Jesus' name, who are washed in the blood, every one of us, according to the scripture, will suffer persecution. A lot of people get persecuted at home, get persecuted by their own relatives, by their own friends. Their own fr their friends don't accept the fact that you're different now. Many family members don't accept the fact that you're different. So they persecute you and they try to get you uh, to, to corrupt yourself and so that they can keep on living the corrupt lives they're living. But when you, in love, with love in your heart, Preach the word of God, teach the word of God, tell people what God's word says, and do what God says do. Even though they attack you, don't worry about it. God's got your back. You see, God is not unrighteous. He will not forget your work of la and labor of love. And God's will is that nobody should perish. He doesn't want anybody to perish. That's First uh, Peter 3, 9. He doesn't want anybody to perish, but... If they choose to disobey God, if they choose to continue disobeying God, there's no way they can get in heaven. And so I caution you. I caution you. Uh, I caution Check your lifestyle. I caution you. Uh, check where you're going to church. I caution you. Check who you're following. Because a lot of these follow preachers, even big-name preachers, 
are continuing in certain sins. Some are locked up in adultery. Some are locked up in drugs. Some are locked up in homosexuality. Some are locked up in lesbianism. And they look good on camera. They look good in the church. They look good in front of people. But their lifestyles are totally different from what they're preaching. And, and, and they have deceived a lot of people. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people have been deceived by these corrupt leaders. And so I caution you. Be careful whom you follow. Make sure you're following a man or woman of God. So let's look at these sins. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. There are leaders in churches. There are pastors. They're not even saved. Ladies and gentlemen, I went to seminary. I remember one time talking with some of my fellow seminarians, and I asked them, oh, are you saved? And they looked at me like I was crazy. Saved? Say, what do you mean? Say, I go to church, they said. I was baptized when I was 13. I was baptized when I was 12. When I was 12. What do you mean, say? I said, have you been born again by the Spirit of God? And they laughed me to shame, ladies and gentlemen, even some of my close friends. I've got close friends, ladies and gentlemen, in the ministry. I'm talking about close friends who have not been born. Ladies and gentlemen, I have close friends, C-L-O-S-E, friends who are in ministry, and they've got, some of them have great big churches, great followings, and they have not been born again by the Spirit of God. No, I'm not judging them. I'm just telling you how it is. But yet, people believe in, in them. People believe in them. They follow them. They will follow them to the death. And so, the Bible says, no unrighteous will inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Fornicators, fornicators, uh, people who continue to uh, have sex outside of marriage or sex outside of their marriage, they cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. You, you, you may say, well, hey, uh, I, I, I made that mistake. I, I, I yielded one time tw 10, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Well, you repented and you got it washed in the blood. I'm talking about people who continue in sin. Romans 6, uh, 1 and 2 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue to dwell in it? And so if you have confessed and repented, you're not on this list. Idolaters. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about idolaters, people who practice idolatry, people who practice uh worshiping false gods. They even have idols. I mean, false gods, ladies and gentlemen. Follow, I mean, followers of Allah. Allah is not God. Allah is not God. Shinto is not God. Buddha is not God. Baha'u'llah is not God. These are false religions, ladies and gentlemen. We've got religions in, in this in this country, uh, uh, people have their own Bibles. The Mormons have the Book of the Mormon. I mean, they have twisted the Bible and added to it and added and made up their own religion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jehovah's Witnesses have tampered with the Bible. They only teach certain things from the Bible, and yet people follow them. Ladies and gentlemen, do not get involved in idolatry. Even the fact where there are people who don't even know their Bible, but they follow certain Christian leaders or so-called Christian leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, check out that leader. Make sure what that leader is teaching is of God, and it's the Word of God, because millions have attached themselves to personalities, and these personalities are leading them to hell. Billions of people worldwide are following false religions, and they will kill you. In the name of their so-called God, whether it's Allah or Buddha or Shinto or Hare Krishna or whoever, they will kill you because you do not agree with them. But ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the, the, the Bible and the history of, the, of Christianity, many people have been put to death because they trusted God and followed God. Well, Jesus, the leader of, of our, our faith. The author and finisher of our faith was put to death. Paul was put to death. 
Peter was put to death. Many of the apostles were put to death. And, and who knows, you and I might have to suffer death for the gospel. But be faithful. Be faithful. Do not cross over to the dark side. Adulterers. Adulterers. People who continue to practice adultery. You say, may say, well, I committed adultery once, and I'm still ashamed of it. Well, repent of it. You repent. Tell God you're sorry, and 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 keep on uh, keeping on in the name of the Lord. We're talking about the Bible's talking about people who continue to practice. There are men who go from house to house, uh, from neighborhood to neighborhood, seeking somebody's wife, and there are wives who are seeking somebody's husband. And and some of these are church leaders, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to call them Christian leaders. They're church leaders. There are pastors who love to uh, sleep with other men's wives. There are uh, people who practice witchcraft. They have controlling, uh, they control uh, other people's wives. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not of the Lord. Jesus Christ did not commit fornication. He was not married. He did not commit adultery. He teaches us his way. God is holy, ladies and gentlemen. And if you have a position in the church, you are supposed to be holy and righteous. And, 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 and praise God, if you have a position, I pray that God puts you in that position. But if man elevated you through that position, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Let God give you promotion. Don't let any man promote you because if man promotes you, he can demote you. He can hire you and he can fire you. Another group we've looked at so far, the sexually immoral. We looked at idolaters who practice worshiping false gods and worship false religions. And, and if you uh, aren't sure about your religion and you're not sure, hey, I even tell people, check me out when I'm preaching. When I'm preaching, you make sure I'm preaching the word of God, not what Leroy thinks, but what God says. Adulterers are on this list. Effeminate. The effeminate are on this list. Now, I know there are, are, are effeminate men, little boys, they call them sissies. Years ago, they called them sissies. But you don't have to stay a sissy. You don't have, and if you are a sissy, if you are effeminate, you don't have to sleep with men. You don't have to give your body over to men, whether you're the active person or the passive person. You don't have to give your body to men. If you're effeminate, you can ask God to make you masculine. God can do anything that he says in his word. He will give you new strength. He will renew your strength like an eagle. But, ladies and gentlemen, because, look, just because it is politically correct these days to be effeminate, to be gay, to be uh, lesbian, uh, 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 to come out of the closet, just because certain states have now uh, said, okay, it's all right to be gay, it's all right to, to marry someone of the same sex. Ladies and gentlemen, those legislative movements, procedures, do not supersede the law of God. God says in his word, we read it, Jackie Fisher read it in 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 9 through 11. If you're effeminate, if you continue to practice uh, being a female and you're a male, you're born to be a male, you're born to be a man, but you want to be a woman and you keep practicing being a woman. Even some have gone through sexual changes, ladies and gentlemen. That's a sin, and you need to repent and ask God to forgive you. And when you repent, God will forgive you. Now, repentance means you turn from those wicked ways. If you ask God to forgive you for being effeminate, that means you stop walking around, stop switching. Get, 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 get some pep in your step. Stop switching your behind. And, and stop acting like a girl. Start acting like a man. And, and, and stop, stop continuing in those gross sins that grieve the Spirit of God. But yet, here's what we have in America, and we have it in other nations too. Now, in Kenya, in certain nations, they put you to death if you're effeminate, if, if you're gay. They will put you to death. In some of the Arabic countries, they will put you to death. In the Old Testament, ladies and gentlemen, if someone was effeminate, their family would take them to the, the uh, elders at the gate of the town, of the city, and the elders would call, cause them to be stoned 
to death. That's in the Old Testament Levitical law. But now today, uh, they, they have churches. They have gay churches. They have lesbian churches. Uh, the pastor's gay, and, and, and the first lady's gay. Uh, the pastor uh, might be, uh, his name might be Joseph, and the first lady's name might be James. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an abomination. Now, I know there are people who, who hate me for preaching this, but I'm a preacher. I'm called to preach the word of God. Your contention is not with me. Your contention is with the word of God. And so we preach Christ Jesus, crucified, buried, resurrected, and soon to come again. And there's only one way to get to heaven. You can work. You can work yourself. You can be gay. You can work yourself. You can feed the hungry. You can uh, 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 fly plane loads of supplies to the people in in uh, the Bahamas. But if you're not born again, you're not going to go to heaven. You can fool the people, but you cannot fool God. Here's another group that cannot uh, make it into heaven: thieves or robbers. Oh, it's okay. So you stole something from. Uh, out of your grandmom's purse when you were six years old. Okay, and you, you ask God to forgive you. Uh, and I believe God has forgiven you. But if you continue to steal, if you, if you're, if you're, the Greek word is kleptos. If you're a kleptomaniac, you continue to steal. Everywhere you go, you've got to steal something. That's a sin. If you continue in sin, the Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I know preachers who are, who are thieves. I know preachers who are robbers. There are some preachers who rob the offerings. They will rob the offerings. They will take from the till. And they will command their officers to, to, to glean off a certain percentage of the offering uh, for the preacher. The greedy and the covetous, that's another group. If you're greedy or you're covetous and you continue practicing greed, practicing coveting, You've got, you overstuff yourself when you eat. You've got to have a hand, grab a handful of everything that's available at a party or at a dinner. Uh, 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 you, you always got to have a takeout uh, to take home or you're covetous. You want what somebody else has, whether that's that person's husband or that person's wife or that person's car or that person's home. You're covetous. It's a sin. And if you, if you continue practicing covetousness, there is no heaven for you. Another uh, group is drunkards. Drunkards, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that includes substance abusers. Drunkards, people who drink uh, and, 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 and get satiated with, with alcohol, uh, whether it's wine or, or, or bourbon or whiskey or beer. Drunks will not get into heaven. Well, you say, can a drunk get saved? Yes, a drunk can get saved. Even an idolater can get, can get saved. Even an adulterer can get saved. Even an effeminate person, even a lesbian can get saved. Even a homosexual can get saved. Even a thief and a robber can get saved. Even the greedy and the covetous can be saved. And the drunkards can be saved. You must be born again. That if you commit that uh, sin to the Lord and ask God to forgive you, God will forgive you. Then stop drinking. Stop drinking. If you can't stop on your own, get delivered. Trust the Holy Spirit. Trust the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got some friends, they can't stop drinking. I, I have one friend, uh, he just can't stop drinking. He's been drinking for years. Well, God delivered me from drinking about 40 years ago, uh, 50 years ago, because I've been saved for 50 years. God delivered me from drinking 50 years ago. And, and haven't had a drink since then. And I refuse to drink wine. I refuse to drink uh, uh, beer. Uh, there, there's a friend of mine, whenever I go to his house, and he goes to a church. He, first thing he offers me, hey, you want a beer? No, I told you, I don't drink beer. He said, I'm just testing you. I want to see if you're still a strong Christian. Well, I intend to stay strong because I don't intend to drink. Drinking almost killed me. Uh, when I was a young man in my 20s, so and I'm not going to drink anymore. The Bible says drunkards will not enter into heaven. Then here's one, ladies and gentlemen, and, and listen to this, please. Slanderers, the revilers. The Bible calls them revilers, slanderers. Now, these are people in high church office. I mean, it might be the bishop. 
might be of the, the uh, 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 of the Pope. They're in high, high office and high holy office, and people look up to them. But out of their mouths come nothing good about people. They have nothing good to say about people. It's it's a sin. Revilers are are people who say all kinds of hateful things out of their mouth and are verbally abusive. They make the top ten list. They are many there are many people who wouldn't think of committing some gross sexual sin, but they do this all the time. They won't commit a gross sexual sin, but they will cut people up with their words. They like to insult and ridicule people. We've got one in high office in this nation who loves to do that. Some political commentators and people in the media are guilty of this. They love to slander. They love to cut people. They love to destroy people with their words. Do you think they're going to go to heaven? The Bible says no, unless they repent, unless they repent. And the Bible tells us we're not even to associate ourselves with them. Finally, on this group are the swindlers, the extortioners, you know, slick Rick, uh, 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 slick chick. They, they spend all their lives swindling people. They practice extortion. And there are people in the church, ladies and gentlemen. Some sit in the pulpit. They are swindlers. They make their living uh, uh, ripping people off. Ladies and gentlemen, these are just some, some uh, people on the list. I'm going to have a different list next week. Tune in next week. But we've we'll looked today at the sexually immoral, the idolaters, the adulterers, the effeminate, the homosexuals, thieves or robbers, greedy or covetous, the drunkards, the substance abusers, we've looked at the slanderers or the verbal abusers, we've looked at the swindlers or extortioners. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, these people will not enter into heaven. I did not make up this list. You read it for yourself. Now, I know there are people that you're not even going to read the Bible, but you need to read the Bible. If you want to be saved, you need to read this Bible for yourself and find out what the Word of God says. Don't take what people say. Just because something is popular, just because the government legislates that it's all right to do this, <clears throat> don't risk your eternal life, ladies and gentlemen. Why risk eternal life if you're a man and you're married to another man? Why risk eternal life if you're a woman married to another woman? Because your state allows it. And it's all right to do this in Maryland. It's all right to do this in, in Georgia. It's all right to do this in Indiana. But it's not all right in heaven. God is not going to allow it, ladies and gentlemen. And so, yes, you, you, you'll probably get mad at the preacher. But get mad at God. You see, God's word will not change. God is immutable. God is holy. He is righteous. He is just. He wants you to be saved. But God is not going to change his word to accommodate your lifestyle or your lust. God is not going to change his word because you like alcohol. God's not going to change his word to allow you into heaven, but you cannot trust God to deliver you from drinking. God is not going to change your word if you're effeminate and you, you like to sleep with men and, 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 and you're a man. And, and God's not going to change your word to allow you into heaven because you're a nice guy or, 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 or you gave blankets out to the hungry, uh, uh, to the cold, and gave out food to the hungry. No, God is holy. He is righteous. And so we've looked at a list of ten people who will not get into heaven. Next week, we're going to look at another list. And ladies and gentlemen, you say, well, I'm on this list. What shall I do? The Bible says that if you will confess with your sins, the same thing that Ryan said to his brother yesterday, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be 
saved. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. And when you're born again, ladies and gentlemen, you don't continue living in adultery. You don't continue uh, drinking. You don't continue lusting after opioids. You don't continue lusting after someone else's wife or husband. When you're truly born again, the Spirit of God sets you free. And he is able to keep you until the day that God calls you home into glory. So there is a way that seems right to a man. Yes, yes, we see it all over us. Legislatures are saying it's all right for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman. It's all right. And, and, and even legislatures say, preacher, in this state of California, you have to marry a gay couple if they ask you to marry them. I refuse to do that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what state I'm in. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible has standards. God set a standard for us. God's word is holy. We are to obey his word. The scripture says, I would rather obey God than to obey men. And Jesus said in Matthew, he said, uh, many will come to him and say, but Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? And ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of prophets out there. Yes, there are well-known prophets out there. Oh, they can prophesy. They can predict earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes. They can tell you the weather patterns. They can tell you, uh, pinpoint exactly right now where Hurricane Dorian is off the coast of Nova Scotia. I mean, they can prophesy when the next storm is coming. But ladies and gentlemen, they have not been born again. They do not obey the word of God. Be cautious. Be very cautious, ladies and gentlemen. And most of all, be very sure, be very sure that your anchor grips and holds to a solid rock. Because the scripture said, except the man be born again, he cannot enter to the kingdom of heaven. Will God allow a drunk into heaven? No. Will God allow a whoremonger into heaven? No. Will God allow an adulterer into heaven? No. Would God uh, allow uh, a, 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 an idolater into heaven? No. Now, you can get saved. You can get saved at any time. And when you're saved, when you repent, the moment you repent and you get saved, you can enter into heaven. Let's say if you're, if you're an idolater and you confess Jesus Christ uh, uh, this moment and five minutes from now you're dead, you, you'll be in heaven because you've confessed Jesus as Lord. But how many people really know when they're going to die? How many people out there are playing with God, saying, God's going to be merciful unto me just before I die? No, don't play with God, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says this day, if you hear my voice, harden not your hearts as your fathers did in the wilderness. This day, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Get saved today and stay saved. If you're involved in any of these sins, repent. Repent now. If you're involved in a homosexual marriage, get out of that marriage. Repent. Get out of it. Turn from it. Go and set up, get, a, get a place of your own. I'd rather see you do that, and God would rather see you do that, than to continue to tempt God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. I pray that if you're caught up in any of these sins or if you have relatives or loved ones or friends who are caught up, that you will turn from your wicked ways, that you'll repent, ask God to help you, and be serious about it. Turn from these things and then encourage your family and friends. Turn from these difficult things and turn from this possible. You can turn. You can be born again. Praise God, because once we leave this earth, there are only two places we can go. One is to heaven, to live eternally with God. The other is to hell. Hell is growing, growing, growing by leaps and bounds every day. People are dying every day. Church leaders winding up in hell. Church members winding up in hell. They sat up in church 30 years but would not believe the word of God. Believe, ladies and gentlemen. Repent.
call upon the name of the Lord. For our God is a mighty God. He is merciful. He is just. He is loving. And he is kind. Praise God. Praise God. If you would like to be saved today, and you realize you're not saved, pray this prayer with me and mean it with all your heart. Pray this. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess my sins. I admit that I have sinned against you. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, and he died on the cross for me. Save me, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, bless God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, we're going to stop our recording. And um, if uh, you'd like to talk to me more about this, give me a call at 404-205-1101 or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com or uh, send me a message via my website. That's www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. Praise God. Stay on. Let's chat and chew for a little bit, those of you who can.